Hey there guys, just wanted to start this video with a quick apology for not doing more videos. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work for a website called legislation.gov.uk and we publish all of the laws of the United Kingdom on our website. Um, as you can imagine, March has been a pretty busy month for us with the EU referendum coming up as well as Welsh and Scottish Assembly elections, um, so apologies for that. But I have received some really positive comments on the channel in the meantime from people like Dark Genie 96 and Sunny as well. Um, and it's really inspired me to try and do more videos for you guys. So hopefully try and sort of do one a week or one every couple of weeks or so, especially with the run up to exams coming up. Um, so this week we're going to look at the first part of free movement of goods. Um, the reason I've split this up into two is because one of the main problems that students have on exams is getting confused between Article 30 questions and Article 34 questions. So I've split them up to try and make the difference as obvious as possible. And um, to try and give you a top tip right from the start, most questions that contain a value of money, say for example, a tax of 30 pounds or an inspection charge of 25 euros, uh, will normally be to do with Article 30. Whereas when a question contains a, a number of goods, so for example, 500 iPhones prevented from entering the UK or 300 sausages prevented from export, for example, uh, then that will normally contain Article 34. So it's a good place to start. If, it, if it's to do with money, Article 30. If it's to do with a number of goods, Article 34. Um, but we'll get more into that as we sit, go through the videos. So let's make a start. Right, so as I say, this week we're going to be looking at Article 30 of the TFEU, which is a complete prohibition on customs duties on goods moving between states. So I think that one of the things that scares people off answering a question on free movement of goods in an exam is that they think they need a degree in economics to understand it. But it's actually relatively simple. If we think of some of the big countries in the world like Brazil, United States, Canada, Russia, China, India, Australia, places like that, you'll see that they're all really big countries, not only in terms of their geographical size and population, but also in terms of their economy as well. Whereas if we move up here and look at Spain, France, United Kingdom, Germany, they're all relatively small countries, both in terms of their size and their economy as well. And so the whole point of the European Union was to join all of these countries together so that they'd be able to compete with places like Russia and like the United States. I think that if you bear that in mind as you're moving your way through any question that, and bear that basic principle and reason why the European Union exists, then you'll go really far when answering a question on it and it will become a lot more clearer why the provisions are in place. So let's get into the nitty gritty of Article 30 then. We have two countries here, A and B. Uh, and before the European Union, there were borders up between these countries. Now, the countries could trade with each other if they agreed with each other that they would trade. But often what happened was that there would be charges placed. So if a country A exported goods to country B, then there would be a charge as it went through um, the border. Now, the whole point of the European Union and in particular Article 30 is to remove those charges and those borders so that country A and country B can trade freely with each other. Article 30 in particular looks at where countries put up new borders between themselves and try and impose charges between them uh, and re-establish those borders. Article 30 says that this just simply isn't allowed and so any customs duty uh, will be banned under Article 30. <clears throat> So a really easy way to pick up uh, marks at the start of any question on free movement of goods is to say, well, what are goods? So if you have a problem question that deals with, for example, beef, um, you might want to say, it, does this beef count as an actual good for the purpose of free movement of goods? And it's very simple because there's one case on this, the Italian art case from 1968. And it, the Court of Justice came up with a very simple definition. Can the goods be valued in money and are they subject to commercial transaction? In other words, can they be traded between people? And this is, uh, as I say, a very old definition, but it stands the test of time very well. So if you think of things like iPhone apps, for example, um, these would still fall under this definition because they can be valued in money. 
so you often have to pay a charge in the app store and they're subject to commercial transaction even if the sort of shop where you buy them is electronic in nature so it's quite a broad definition um, and as i say an easy way to pick up marks at the start of any question on free movement of goods so it's also a negative duty. This contrasts with a positive duty where states have to actually do something. A negative duty is that the states are obliged not to do something, and in this case, not to put up borders between their countries. So Van Genden Lees, one of the most famous cases in EU law, um, was where the Dutch government attempted to put up a boundary between them and other countries. This was a to do with pharmaceutical products and the EU stepped in and said no the whole point of article 30 is that you don't put up um, customs charges or borders between these two countries uh, and so uh, the Dutch government was found liable in that particular case. So we have to look at the effect rather than the purpose. So it doesn't matter what reason a country gives for putting up the border. The fact of the matter is, if there is a border in place, it simply won't be allowed. No ifs, no buts, just no borders and no customs charges between the two countries. So we've got a couple of cases here. In Diamond Arbiders, the Belgian government tried to put up a charge to help the people who had worked in the diamond industry. And while this was a very noble objective and a good reason for the charge, the EU said, well, the reason behind it isn't important. The fact of the matter is there shouldn't be any charges whatsoever. Um, Italian art as well. The Italian government didn't want to lose many of its national treasures, its paintings and um, statues and things like that from ancient history. And they, they said that that's the reason they put the charge up at the border. Um, and again, the EU stepped in and said it doesn't matter what the reason is. Um, there simply isn't allowed to be any charges or any borders between the countries whatsoever. So uh, uh, one of the ways that countries try and get around this is to, rather than call them customs duties, they may call the tax something else. So like a customs charge or a customs tax, um, something like that. And in order to avoid this loophole or to close this loophole up, the EU has basically said that any charge which has the equivalent effect of a customs duty will not be allowed. So in Commission in Italy 1969, they said that any charge which is imposed when the goods cross a frontier will effectively fall under Article 30 and will not be allowed. Doesn't matter what they call the charge, but if the charge is applied when the goods cross a boundary from one country into another, then it will fall under Article 30 and will also be banned. Border inspections is quite interesting because often goods traded between European countries are livestock, so things like cattle and pigs, and countries are concerned not to get diseases or have infected animals brought into their country. Now, some countries impose compulsory charges and try to charge the ex exporter for that charge. However, what the EU said in this case, and this is quite interesting, is that because the effect of the health inspection benefits the population that's importing the goods, it should be those people, i.e. the importing country, that pays the charge. It shouldn't be the exporters who do that. Um, and so the compulsory charge in Commission in Belgium 1983 um, was not allowed under Article 30. However, in this case, it also looked at an optional charge that countries could pay if they wanted to store their livestock um, for a longer period of time than was necessary for the inspection to take place. And because this was optional, in other words, the exporter could decide whether or not they did want to pay it, this was allowed under Article 30. So optional charges are allowed because it gives the company or the exporting country a degree of discretion. Commission in Germany 1987 is also quite interesting because it says that where charges are imposed by the EU and so they apply across the whole of the 28 countries, these will be allowed and so there can be a charge that's put in place basically because it's the same across the whole of the European Union. Now, Article 110 seeks to also close up a loophole. As we've already sort of said, the countries will try and put up boundaries. And the point of Article 30 is to allow this free movement of goods across the borders. 
Now, some countries try and get around this by imposing internal taxation. So they won't impose a charge at the border, but rather they'll wait until the goods are in the country and then they'll impose heavy taxation on them once they're inside. So it doesn't fall under Article 30 because 30 is only concerned with where the um, charge occurs here, crossing the border. Um, but it's Article 110 looks at where the countries are trying to get round this by imposing a tax once the goods are inside the country and that won't be allowed. So Article 110 is split into two parts. Part one says that there should be no discrimination in the taxation system between similar domestic goods and imports as well. So John Walker, the first case up there from 1986, looks at whether whiskey is similar to fruit liqueur. And the Court of Justice decided in this case that they weren't similar because whiskey has a different alcohol volume content to fruit liqueur and also um, the, they are made in different ways as well. So one's fermented and one is distilled. Commission in Italy is one of my favourite cases because the question before the court was, do bananas count as fruit? Now, for me, I would always think that bananas probably do count as fruit, but the EU apparently disagrees. And um, they had a lot of famous scientists come in and de debate this issue about whether bananas do count as fruit. And they decided that fruit, um, that bananas, sorry, were not similar to other fruits such as apples, pears, oranges, etc. I think that technically bananas are counted as seeds rather than fruit, um, so they weren't similar either. Worth bearing in mind that under Article 110, as with Article 30, we have to look at the effect rather than the purpose. So in Umblo, that case I put up there at the bottom of the screen, um, this was a tax imposed by the French government that basically charged cars that were imported based on the size of their engine. Now, French cars um, are obviously very smaller, things like Citroën, um, Renault, they have smaller engines than big German cars like Volkswagen and BMWs. And so it was an inadvertent mistake by the French government. They didn't realise that they were discriminating against the German cars. But as we say, the European Court of Justice doesn't look at the purpose of the taxation. They only look at the effect. And the effect in this case was that there was discrimination between the um, French domestic cars and the imported German cars from the tax regime. So 110 part two is more broad because it looks at competing domestic goods and imports. So we have Commission in UK there, a 1983 case that looked at a distinction between um, French wine and English beer. And French wine was ta taxed at a higher rate than English beer. And the French government basically said that this was discriminatory. And so the commission brought a case under Article 258. And the question was, do the goods compete against each other? So whereas in John Walker, the case on the previous slide, beer and wine might be seen as very different because one is obviously made from grain, one is made from grapes. Um, in this case, they actually said, well, the goods do compete against each other because when you go to the pub, you might order a beer but some people might order a wine and so they do directly compete against each other in the alcohol market so 110 part two is a lot more broad and there's basically two questions to ask um, when answering this in a problem question do the products compete against each other so would you think about buying buying a beer or buying a wine well they obviously do compete and does the tax favor domestic goods over imports and that's the point that we're trying to um, get against with Article 110. And that's it. Article 30 prevents any charges when goods cross a border and Article 110 closes the loophole whereby countries might impose a tax once the goods are actually inside the country. I think that if you're answering this for either an essay question in an exam or even a problem question, then definitely try and sort of follow the pattern that I went through in this presentation. In other words, start, start with actually defining what goods are, move on to discuss things like w looking at the effect rather than the purpose, that it imposes a negative duty, and then use the case law as well to make some judgment calls about whether you think um, c products compete with each other or whether they're similar. Do you think that bananas are fruits? Leave a comment below if you think they are. 
Um, and that should be it really. Next time will be a little bit more complicated because we'll be looking at Article 34. But I think that covers everything for Article 30. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a like, comment if you have any questions or anything you'd like to say or recommendations for future videos. And also make sure you subscribe as well for more videos in the future. Thanks very much. Bye.